Hello everyone, I am Tessellating Hexagons and what the fresh hell was that intro? Anyway, this is even the ocean. Um, yeah, that's about as intro as I can be bothered to come up with. So in the last episode, we, um, oh, <laughs> yes, we owe. We finished up the Boreas Heights power plant and we were told of the existence of these geomes, these giant elemental monsters that have been messing with the power plants and so we were told to go off to three entirely new power plants that I had entirely predicted ahead of time. And since, well, since there aren't any tutorial levels associated with these areas, unless there are and they just didn't appear until after the sequence with Yara, which I didn't even think of at the time, but it's it's possible I suppose, but no. It seems as though these areas themselves, like the, the areas leading up to the power plants, seem to be tutorial enough of what to expect. So this one, we have platforms that sort of go, and they're on chains, and they go in directions, and it's like a gimmick or something. Yay. Now for some reason, this reminds me of the Yoshi's Island series, and okay, you caught me. I can never settle on how to pronounce Yoshi. Like. Yoshi? Yoshi? It all sounds wrong to me, I can't say it right. But it reminds me of that, even though I don't like that game series. Like, it's just not my sort of thing. Too much pressure. Also, the, the second one has absolutely crap level design. Apparently the third one has terrible music and the first one is old, but that's about the worst thing there is to say about it. Also, this area is so pretty! Ah, it's so... Ah, it's so pretty! Mr. Carrot. I, I shall call you Carrot, even though your name is Garrett. That's... I was gonna say, that that'd be slightly worrying, because every, everywhere's so pretty, it seems like one of those small, tight-knit communities where everyone knows each other. So... How would you get away with crime? So, you're just sort of there for atmosphere, which is fair enough. But, oh my... This area is gorgeous! This is, I, I'm not even deliberately overreacting, like, this area is actually really pretty. Oh, and they have, they have cafe as well, and they have soup, and I would so very live here. Is this a, there is a down, what are you doing down here, sir, with your boats? That's, you make boats, that is not what I thought from your face. I, I thought you were a boat rental person. Do you occasionally put on a hooded robe and travel inside Mount Ebot? Ah, uh, references. Does it... I, I know it's a bit late for me to start wondering this now, but is it bothersome that I talk to at least some of the NPCs because that's kind of the appeal of me doing the game, like the full game. Because I've said before, and we saw in the very first episode, this game has four modes. A chapter select, a play from the beginning with everything, a just story, and a just platforming. And for Let's Playing purposes, I suppose the just platforming is probably the best way to go. But no, I've gone with the full game so that we know what the story is. And part of the story is to take in the atmosphere of every area. So if it's annoying that I talk to some of the NPCs, well... Don't... Don't be anger, because it is a good game that is well written and knees. Hello, face. You have a face. Yes, we're going to entirely remove the GM creature. Male birds! They use birds! Birds! This is so lovely! What? There is stuff? Why would you send messages to no one in particular unless it's like an allegory for, um, for like forums? Yeah, ads, why not? I misread that immediately as UFO. Well, excuse you, I just got here. I could read the others, but hey, that's kind of what I was about to say and then forgot to say. I talked to some of the NPCs, but not all of them, so you can... You can play the game for yourself and talk to whoever you please. And your parents are none of my concern. Are you homeschooled by any chance? That that's just that's the um that's the punchline that I'm anticipating here. Go on. Oh, you're not gonna say it? I'm just going to assume that you're homeschooled then. And you there. Yeah, are, are they yours as well? Ah. 
Yay, atmosphere. Oh, that's true. I mean, we have achievements, but no trophies. I understand that feeling. Because I was one of those children who grew up in an environment where everyone was getting trophies for stuff and I never did. I was being recognised for academic achievements, sure, but never any trophies, because trophies are awarded to sport people with a capital S and a capital P. Which P? I'm not going to tell you. <laughs> oh, I'm slightly loopy. But for the 50 bweventh time, this place is so pretty! Ah! Also, the music is really serene. I should probably point that out as well. So, in other words, Whiteforge City has completely crushed the existence of this town, but it's still here and still pretty. It's just not as well as... It's not well as off as it used to be. Do you need a key? Is the senior gatekeeper on the other side of the bridge? But you're the gatekeeper! It definitely falls under your jurisdiction. Yay, everything is... Everything is deliberately made awkward, because why would you... Why would you want to do platforming in a... You know. It can never be straightforward, that's kind of... I'm trying to be funny about it and failing miserably. Also, pods, just random pods. Chilling in the town place. So we do need to use the post office. So, stamp person. I need to mail bird the gate fuck. I completely missed it on the, the the list of options because I was thinking, wait, where's the gate fuck option? Uh, my brain really is sometimes just so with the yes. Do I even English, bruh? <laughs> English hexagons, do you speak it? Evidently not. He says in English. Well, never mind. No, clearly, clearly the um. Do I hunt monsters? Clearly the male bird's gonna drop the key off in my hands and it'll be up to me to open the the, the door and I will just steal 12,000 thunders from your back pocket. Oh, you and your jurisdictions. No, Aleph, don't shout about your plans. People will steal them and then you won't be able to claim credit for them because patent pending potatoes. You're trying a little too hard, but it's endearing. Oh, where the fuck did you come from? Literally, where were you? Also, those birds are really fucking efficient. You have been knowed. Oh. But that's how keys work in video games. You use them once and then they're permanently gone. Also, fair point. That, mm, I feel like there's an entire debate to be had there by itself. The, I refuse to give you experience even though you need it because you... You don't have experience, so I won't give you experience. <sighs> Not in the mood for that discussion right now. Wow, two save points, like, right next to each other. I understand because one would be for the end of Riverton and one's for the start of the platforming section. And of course, if you're doing story-only mode or platforming-only mode, you'd only see one of those, so that makes sense from a design point of view. Why so much shaft? <laughs> I knew what I was saying, and by the time I realised that I'd already committed to saying it also, the local gimmick, as we've established, are these shoopy platforms, which weren't this colour when I first saw them in the development streams. They were, I believe they were a lot like greyer. I don't think I have any screenshots that to put in, so I'm not going to go out my way to edit that in, but... At the moment, they look a little... Like, they remind me of the, um... The Geome Spore corpses from... From Restview. Like, they look like they're sort of a little bit organic and deadly, and you know what? Who needs an elevator? Or a lift? Which reminds me, I was thinking about this earlier. Sometimes, like, it's not... I don't want to call it a recurring dream, but like a semi-recurring theme within my dreams sometimes are lifts that don't behave properly. And that's about as specific as I can get. Like sometimes I will just dream of getting in like a lift or something and it'll like it'll not stop at the floor that I want to get off at. Like it'll go too high or too low, it'll go to floors that don't exist 
as far as the building that it's in is concerned. It'll go too fast. It's it's crazy. That, that was part of the bathrobe dream as well, which have I... Mm, I don't remember. Have I ever told that story on recording? Also, I am absolutely pressing the, the wrong button to hold the shield up. So that would explain why I'm... Oh, I am very saturated, but that's okay because challenge run. But I did once have a dream where... Um, actually, I don't remember. Please, we are very close to death. Shoot me, please. I present unto you my back such that you may power me up horizontally so that I may achieve balance. As I had a dream, and I don't remember the specifics of it, but I was with Europe Scalo 8, and we were at like a motorway service station or something, and... Oh! that This is a room. I like it. I like it. If you stand on the floor too long, then you won't be able to leave. Clever. I wonder if that room can kill you then. Like, can you get crushed against the ceiling? Okay, we're in a motorway service station. We get in a lift that goes to the fifth floor of a two-story building. And there's like a, a public toilet up there. But, like, the sign on the door said bathroom. <laughs> um, oh, this is water. I wondered why it was a weird color. That's about all I can remember. Like, I think there was... There was like a woman and her like five-year-old son who were also there and they were leaving when we were arriving and I think they were the reason that the, that the lift was being mischievous, but I don't remember. This was a while ago, but it's sort of become a running joke between a couple of my friends now, like sort of Walking Dead meme style. Bathroom, Carl! Bathroom! Don't kill me, please. Thank you. So I guess that's the anecdote of this episode. Tweet! Twee! <laughs> I was not prepared for the laser shenanigans. Oh! Oh, I remember this. Another thing that I saw in the stream is we have lasers that follow. Not not, not you specifically, just lasers that follow. <laughs> just that follow, as opposed to this follow. No. So that isn't even wordplay, it's just me saying words that can be used in multiple different grammatical constructions. Go the other way, please, you snotty kabooble of platform. Am I funny yet? <laughs> Am I entertaining yet? <laughs> Does someone out there like me? <laughs> but seriously, on a scale of A to 7, how obnoxious am I? Eee! Sorry, that, that, that wasn't meant to be a, an example. Just legitimate first-time reactions to platforming challenges that I have not before seen. Now, I do recall from the... Um, from the live streams, there is one level like this that's around this point in the game, although the game's text at the time referred to it as a silo, so I'm thinking that's probably our next destination after these three power plants. But I know at least one of them has like really good but really weird music, and um, the guy who was doing the, um, the development stream is the one who does the level design as opposed to the music, and he said that he thought it was really weird, but he was glad that we liked it. Yes, the, the royal we. Which now I'm just, again, not wordplay, but still. Just imagining like a, a gold-plated Nintendo Wii with like ruby buttons and shit. Ruby buttons and shit. Yeah, it's a royal Wii. That wasn't funny. Stop trying to hammer it home, Tess. Hey, oh, this is going to be fun. Well, at least this one isn't as fast upwards as that. There, there was one power plant, and I've already forgotten which one it was, but there was a power plant where we were descending really rapidly through... A series of those icy wall corridors. I like this room. The first time seeing it, and I already like it. We were descending like this, except the walls were icy. And there were a load of pods along the walls. And I managed to hit basically every single one of them and still managed to not die. In fact, I'm impressed that I've gone this long, well, first of all, without dying at all, but also in this power plant being so comparatively balanced. Like, I hit one pod there, and there was a bit of an unfortune earlier, but overall, this has been going well. Oh, it's these again! Uh, it's like a throwback to rest view because that was like act two thing one and this is act three thing one as far as I'm concerned because this was the first place we were told to go to when we were like when they listed off all the places to go to this was the first one ooh e ooh ah ah ting tang walla walla bing bang So 
to... Uh, I think I understand? So if I get this as far to the right as it'll go, and then drop down, hit that, and jump up this way, then, yeah, don't need to go through that door to get back out. Okay, that was a fun little puzzle. I think just watching me do it explains it better than I could put it into words, so... Oh, I was slightly worried that I might bop my head on the, the, the bullets there, and I could have surfed along the bottom, but no, because there are platforms and I must respect this level's gimmick. No, 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 thank you. <laughs> Once again, seeing what I'm doing is probably a better explanation of what I was thinking than hearing me explain it in words, because sometimes words I can't. And again, we're like, very balanced. We are... A berry fandango. <laughs> Which actually kind of sounds like a cocktail. Which, okay, entirely even more unrelated than the last tangent that I went on. But I remember there was a website that I used to be familiar with once a long time ago. And they had like a really, really overzealous swear word filter. Like, it's not quite on the same scale that would turn assassinate into butt buttonate, or participants into participant trousers, but it would censor the O in the word cocktail, just because it contains the word cock. Now, bearing in mind, this was a Pokemon website, where this is a franchise that you can't, or cer certainly at a certain point in the series, you couldn't trans- uh, not translate, trade a, a particular type of Pokemon over the internet because of its name, and I think there was some- there was some variety in the ones that that applied to. Like, uh, Rewind test. You can't trade some Pokemon online, or there was a time when you couldn't, for the reason that... Oh. Okay, I'm guessing that these bullets then reset that door. I understand. Like, there's some Pokemon that you can't trade online because the game registered them as having offensive nicknames, because you can nickname Pokemon. And it's because they it contained... Aleph, can you not? Because it, it contained what it deemed to be, like, a bad word in one of the languages the game was translated into. So, typically English, but, you know, could be Spanish, German, whatever. And normally that's fair enough. I hit entirely the wrong one there. Wait, shit, I need to, I need to stand on the other platform. Duh. One such Pokemon is... Well, I never know how to pronounce it. I've heard other people call it Cofagrigus. I was pronounced it Cofagrigus, and that kind of demonstrates the problem. It contains the word fag, so it wasn't allowed to be tra Again, tra no, not translated, traded online. And I don't remember what got me on this tangent in the first place, but that was... that was a thing. And I think Bulbasaur, Ivysaur, and Venusaur couldn't be traded online either, because they contained Sau, like S-A-U, which I think is like... It's German for, like, Sau, like in English, like S-O-W, but in German there's some sort of connotation of it being like a... a slur against women or something? I don't know. I don't have German sensitivities. Also, my knee hurts, because I'm having to record at a weird angle, as usual. Uh, save point. Should I stop now? Well, I've, I've committed now. Oh! Paxton, are you dead? Did you die? DID YOU DIE?! For fuck's sake. Hi. <sighs> I did call it though, to be fair. Hi. <sighs> Why does this keep happening? Oh. Okay, so the solitary oak that we saw is actually more story relevant than I thought. I thought it was just a nice little bit of scenery. I'm going to make note of that in post, and I guess that's where we'll be going in the next episode. So... Lopez didn't have a family emergency, she just didn't want to be here because this is more trouble than she thought. And Paxton... Could this... Was this an accident? Was this suicide? I think this is a really poignant note to end the episode on. So, 
I have been and will continue to be tessellating hexagons, and in the next episode, we're going to stabilise the plant, and then find out what the deal with Paxton is, and then also find Lopez and, well, not deal with her, because clearly she's worried, and for good reason. But that's for next time. See you then.